Hi there, welcome to I Should Be Writing, the podcast for wannabe fiction writers. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty. And I always feel like people tell me, you do so much, how do you do it? You do podcasting, you do writing, you do uh, more than one podcast, you edit a skate pod, and it never feels like I actually do any of those things efficiently enough for people to be impressed. For example, my goal was to do a live crowdcast at lunch on Mondays, and then regular podcast for the rest of the week. However, in trying to focus doing regular Monday live streams, I haven't done anything else. Um, things are going better for me. I am uh, seeing a physical therapist and a chiropractor for my migraines. Had some um, had some x-rays taken of my neck, and so we kind of have a, a thing we can point to to say, here is where your headaches come from. So hopefully that will give me some relief. And I started doing better on my ADD medication. So I'm, instead of wishing for immediate relief of, of being unable to focus, which is a lot of words that's, that mean instead of wishing for automatic focus, I actually have to start the ball rolling, as I've said. I you know, have to start work and then the focus comes. And so since I started trying to work with the meds that way, things have gone a lot better. So my writing is getting a lot more consistent, which is great. Because I've, I've solve things by writing. If, I ha- if I'm stuck in a plot point and I sit there and think, maybe I'll solve it. But the chances are much greater if I sit down and just try to write out the scene. Then things occur to me. So in doing the writing, I've also been able to uh, work through some problems, which makes the writing go faster. So that's a happy thing. So yeah, the writing's getting better, the crowd casts are getting more free, uh, more consistent, and that's open to everybody, I think, until the end of the month, and then I'll be doing a crowd cast for Patreon supporters, and I might be doing some weird Twitch streams for everybody, because I've been playing with Twitch lately. But now, since I'm able to write frequently and getting the crowdcast under control. I'm hoping to get back to this, the old podcast thing. Remember the old dusty podcast we used to listen to back when we were innocent and young? I don't know what I'm saying. When I got my recording stuff and said I was going outside to record, I said I did not know what I would talk about. There's the downside of having a long live stream because I often end up talking about a lot of things that people that, that don't get covered in the regular podcast. And then I don't know whether I should repeat it or not because only, only a handful of people were there live, but I have put the audio in the uh, RSS feed. But anyway, I was saying I was going outside and I asked my daughter um, what I should talk about. And she said, talk about the new side project I'm doing because it's challenging. And I don't mean to humble brag here, but sometimes it's, I don't know if it's a humble brag thing or if it's a low self-esteem thing, because sometimes when you find something easy, you often think it must be easy for everyone else because I can't be talented enough to do this better than anybody, so clearly this is something everybody can do. But my daughter told me that's not the case, and what I need to be doing is uh, talking about what I'm working on. So this is shameful, but at least I'm fixing it. I have been remiss in delivering some of my higher level Patreon rewards. And so yesterday I took a couple of hours and went through, and if you've supported me, see, Patreon now tracks what you should be delivering to people. 
and it has their names. And then you hit that you delivered it and it takes their name off the list. If you stop supporting my Patreon, you're still on the list. So I was sending free ebooks to everybody who's supported at that level or ever has. If you're not my patron anymore, I hope I wasn't spamming you yesterday. I was just trying to deliver the thing I promised. Oh, boy. Anyway, um, but another thing I promised was a serialized fiction. And I keep thinking, well, that thing I want to write, that thing I've already sold and I can't tell you guys about yet, that thing I want my agent to sell, and these are all the ideas in my head, But the other night, we were, uh, one thing I find funny about recipe blogs is they're pretty much all the same, and everyone I know who cooks hates that format. And the format, if you don't cook, is, the title of the blog post is The Dish, and then you'll get two to three thousand words of nostalgia, a story, who in their family loves it, where they got it, and when they first cooked it, their family hated it, so they had to modify it, and this is their modification, and they go on and on and on, and you're thinking, I really don't give a crap about your grandmother, I just want the biscuit recipe. And you know, as you scroll through, you you figure out that what they need you to do is put eyeballs on an ad, because there'll be like two paragraphs of long, sappy story, and then there's an ad, and then you go two more paragraphs, and then there's another ad. So it's just uh, trying to get you to look at all these ads so they can make revenue. Which I respect that. They're giving away their stuff for free. They need to make money somehow. However, the sappy, long blog post recipe is uh, pretty much a cliche at this point. So I was joking about it with my family and we decided I was going to make a crappy recipe blog. So for the Patreon supporters last night I started what I'm calling the bitterest which is a story told in recipe blog format. And it starts out with our hero uh, giving up her grandmother's secret meatloaf recipe because she hated her grandmother. And this is a, I'm right, I'm publishing it as I go. So, if there's inconsistencies or holes in the plot, I apologize, but I'm going to be trying to tell the story of this woman and her family via the blog. It's supposed to be funny. I'm hoping I achieve that. Not a lot of science fiction unless I decide to make the internet do things that it doesn't quite do yet, but it's still free fiction that's fun to write. And so that's, that's everybody, that's a win-win for everybody. But what I'm, d- I'm discovering in telling a story via blog post is, I guess it's kind of like, um, I can never say that word, what is it, epistolary? I think that's it, when you tell story via letters. It's that format only with blogs, and... One thing I think people do with blogs is their voice is a lot more conversational than, say, if they were doing a first-person narrative. For one thing, a blog assumes there's a real audience. When you write a first-person narrative, if someone's telling, hey, this thing happened to me, there's not always an assumed audience of that story. It's just, this is the point of view you get so you can look as deep into a character's mind as you can possibly go. But when you tell a story, I did this, it's implying that someone out there is listening. 
the Broken Earth series, N.K. Jemisin, she does this with second person, where uh, it is it is revealed who the you is when during one narrative. It's it's told in a lot of different kinds of narratives, but in one narrative, it's in second person, and then you find out who's speaking and who they're speaking to, which is another brilliant reveal. So, if you're writing a story in blog form, there is an assumed audience out there. Even if you don't know who it is, you figure someone reading my blog, or a, like in my case, it's a chef, or it's members of this person's family, because I'm going to be airing a lot of family dirt, or family laundry, dirty laundry, airing dirty laundry. I think that's how the metaphor goes. But I'll be talking about that, so I'm assuming that my character's family is reading. Conversational tone. You can also pull in links to somewhere else that can be real or another manufactured site. They're just different ways to tell a story. Um, you can also bring in comments, which I have not done yet. But a story can be told via a comment thread on a blog. I think one of the big things you think about when you're telling stories like this is what you leave out is as important as what you put in. For example, I've mentioned a cousin, but I'm leaving out the extent of their relationship and their past together, partly because I don't know it yet, but partly I'm leaving stuff there that people can reveal or, or, or discover later. I guess it's like revealing stuff in a regular story, but you have to do it in a conversational tone. When a character is speaking, whether in a letter, a blog post, or dialogue, what they don't say can be as important as what they say. I really wish I could remember this. I, I want to say it was a Toni Morrison book, but when I was uh, doing my MFA, there was a scene from a book where a family was sitting down to a big Sunday meal, and they were all talking about polite stuff, but by the description in the scene and by what one person was saying and nobody else was saying, you got a sense that there was a whole lot more going on there. Mentioning the empty seat at the table, mentioning a phone call someone had with a lawyer, etc. Um, I don't, I don't remember if those are exact things. All I remember was what I learned from that scene. I just don't remember the scene very well. Oh boy, my memory is crap. But just like you can have a, uh, when you tell a story via a TV show versus a movie versus a book, choosing a different medium is huge when it comes to how the story's told. One thing I really like to think about with a visual storytelling such as TV or movies is how much you can tell through camera angles and who's in a scene and who's not in a scene. And even stage versus a movie are, is different because if you have something on a stage like a telephone, yeah, there are ways to make people look at it but it's much easier to just have a camera focus on the thing, which implies this is important. And in text, that's easy to do too. The biggest thing is remember your medium and play with what you can achieve within that medium. And you can tell the same story several different ways. I am choosing blog posts. If you are not a uh, supporter at the level of Patreon to get the serialized fiction, um, I'll be putting it on my blog in a couple of months, probably. But right now it's a Patreon exclusive. 
It is called The Bitterest. And it's about to rain here, so I should get inside and maybe actually put this podcast on the web so you can hear it. So I'm going to do that. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sticking with me. Remember, live Crowdcast, where you can watch me on video and ask me questions every Monday around 1230 Eastern Daylight Time. And I'm going to be try to be getting regular podcasts to you more frequently because I'm being more productive and healthier and I want to take advantage of that. So onward. If you want to support me, that's patreon.com slash mightymer where you will actually get serialized fiction and the like. I'm going to be taking the uh, signed advanced reader's copy option off the list because I'm almost out of the arcs that I have. So I can't promise any more unless I want to start going out and buying books for people. Which, you know, is doable, but that is buying your own books, which is kind of weird. But you can follow me on Twitter at Mighty Murr. And you can uh, see the blog and show notes at merverse.com. On Crowdcast, I am Mighty Murr. And on Twitch, I am Mighty Murr. I'm going to be doing some Stardew Valley streaming and talking about writing at the same time. Just to see how it works. Because people seem to be doing a lot of innovative things with um, Animal Crossing right now. And I can't stream Animal Crossing because it's... Well, it requires a card that's expensive, and I haven't decided whether I want to spend that kind of money on uh, streaming yet. But people are doing really innovative things with Animal Crossing. It's, it's very funny. They're doing a talk show where they have the characters... Uh, the, the I think it's Gary Whitta, actually, uh, does interview somebody... And I'm pretty sure Sting doesn't play Animal Crossing, so they have someone else play a character, play a person that looks like Sting, and then runs the emotions options when he laughs or says he's surprised by something or whatever. And uh, it's it comes together really well, and I think. Uh, a comedian is also having open mics, so she built her house like a stage, and then she invites other people to come in, and either they can, if they play Animal Crossing, they can bring their person in, or she can have somebody else change their appearance to look like the person, and then uh, essentially puppet the character so that it acts, it, it ma- it's, uh, sorry, Puppet the characters so that their responses and actions and everything sound like what the comedian sent in as their set. And I think that's awesome. So I'm trying to figure out what I can do with Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is not Animal Crossing, but at least it's something interesting and different. So check me out on Twitch if if that sounds like fun to you. And I think that's everything I have to talk about. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Because you should be writing. Remember, you can support the show at patreon.com slash I should be writing theme music provided by John Emilio. You can find more about him at johnemilio.com. This podcast is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license. The fact that's on TV.